Came here last September. We were told the tale of the Ring Central Coliseum possible. Last night, the Oakland City Council shot down a proposal that would give voters a say in the A's plan for that new stadium. We got burnt with the Raiders. We got burnt with the Warriors. Now we're getting burnt with the A's. The possum, who apparently lives somewhere in the wall behind that visitor's TV booth. It's a ground ball to the right side, speared by Phillips. Flips Ackers Lee. Yes, he's there in time, and the A's are the world champion. The Oakland Athletics are the laughing stock of baseball. And worst of all, they're staring relocation dead in the eye. How did one of the proudest, most innovative teams of the last half century fall into such ugly disrepair? If you dig deeper into this team's history, sadness follows it like a black cloud. You might know that they are leaving, but just how did we get here? It's time for the sad and complete history of the Oakland A's. Think of all the worst time sucks in your life doing dishes, laundry. There's one time suck you forget about, meal prep, and it sucks. That's where Factor comes in. With Factor, healthy, delicious meals are delivered right to your door with no prep and no mess. They cut out that stressful meal planning and tedious shopping trip. And also the cooking part. My favorite thing is that these meals are filling and at about 550 calories or sometimes less. Eat up and then get moving. Factor now offers 34 different meals per week and 45 plus add-on options like smoothies, juices, and snacks. And with Factor, you get a complete dietary system, whether it's keto, calorie smart, chef's choice, protein plus vegan or veggie. It's all here and it's all easy. So after this video, head to factor75.com or the link below and use code 5points50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Again, that's factor75.com from the link below and use code 5points50 to get 50% off your first box. You may not know it, but the A's are one of the oldest teams in all of Major League Baseball. Founded in 1901, they were originally known as the Philadelphia Athletics. Led by legendary manager and later owner of the team Connie Mack, all-time greats like Chief Bender, Jimmy Fox, and Lefty Grove brought five championships to Philadelphia. With the team in debt and after a series of bad business moves, the squad was sold and they headed west for Kansas City in 1955, marking the first of their tragic, bitter moves. Their time in Kansas City seemed destined to be short from the get-go. Rumors swirled that the team was headed to Los Angeles even shortly after arriving in the Midwest. However, it would not be owner Art Johnson who would relocate him, as before the 1960 season he was fatally stricken with the cerebral hemorrhage, and Johnson died at the age of 53. New owner Chuck Finley took over. Finley was an innovator in baseball, but also a skinflint and a shrewd businessman. Despite many promises and investments in Kansas City, Finley began looking to relocate almost immediately after he purchased the team. At this time, he changed the team's colors from the longtime blue to the Kelly green we see today. As the on-field product and attendance waned, Finley narrowed his choices down to Seattle and Oakland, opting for the city across the bay from San Francisco in 1968. He also left Kansas City holding the bag after signing a stadium deal. Good old Charlie O. Finley. As you'll see, bitterness followed the A's everywhere they went. Oakland was home to the Raiders of the American Football League, and the two teams would share the Oakland Coliseum, a once beautiful open grandstand by the water in Alameda. It didn't take long for the A's to find success in their new home. From 1972 to 1974, the A's won back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back World Series titles on the backs of Vita Blue, Catfish Hunter, Reggie Jackson, Joe Rudy, and Raleigh Fingers. However, things would decline rapidly following their third championship. With the permission of free agency, all of their top talent fled. Catfish Hunter, gone. Reggie Jackson became a megastar in New York. Joe Rudy, gone. Despite the accolades and team success and Finley's knack for promotion, the team never drew well. In the decline, the team earned the nickname, the Triple A's, 
that, that, that's actually pretty good. Finally, he had enough and owner Charlie O. Finley nearly sold the team to businessman Marvin Davis, who wanted to move the team to Denver, but eventually reconsidered and sold to Walter Haas, who oversaw the team as they became winners again in the late 80s, making three consecutive trips to the World Series, capturing a title in 89 in the midst of a major earthquake that shocked both the Giants and A's and overshadowed a dominant performance by a team that had to wait nearly a month to complete their sweep. That era was defined by the emergence of the Bash Brothers. The young duo of Mark McGuire and Jose Canseco hit bombs as manager Tony La Russa oversaw one of the most exciting, potent teams in baseball. She said she wanna fuck me with my uniform on! It just so happened that they also had the highest payroll in baseball in 1991. Yeah, that doesn't sound funny. That was about to change in a big way. When Haas passed away in 1995, new owners Steven Schott and Ken Hoffman entered the scene and took a different approach to spending. Pretty much the exact opposite of spending. General Manager Sandy Alderson was ordered to decimate the once robust payroll, which forced the GM to get creative to find a way to field a winning team without the aid of a blank check. With his protege, former MLB outfielder Billy Bean, Alderson adopted the use of Sabre metrics, principles that were pioneered by baseball writer Bill James, that prioritized stats like on base percentage and the three true outcomes over superficial figures like batting average and individual. ERA. The A's had a clear disadvantage in resources, but a major advantage in strategy. When Bean succeeded Alderson as general manager in 1997, he began building one of the most efficient teams in sports. By 2000, they were in the playoffs. In 2002, they became a national sensation. It wasn't just that the 2002 A's won 20 consecutive games or that they won the AL West by a convincing margin. It's that they were being followed and carefully studied. Author Michael Lewis shadowed Billy Bean and the rest of the team during that magical season, writing what would become a book called Moneyball, a captivating account of Bean's economic approach to designing a winning baseball team. Bean and the rest of the front office became stars, maybe more so than the players themselves. But there was a big problem, the secret was out. As the A's tactics were slowly revealed, the rest of baseball started to catch on. Armed with higher payrolls, deeper budgets, and shrewd analysis, teams like the once-cursed Red Sox did what the A's couldn't do, win a World Series. The A's had unlocked the formula for winning in the long term, but in the short-term chaos of the postseason, they failed to rise to the occasion. Oakland suffered four straight series losses in the first round from 2000 to 2003, each time in the decisive Game 5. Brutal. There's no play that summarizes their anguish more than Derek Jeter's shovel pass to the plate to get Jeremy Giambi out at home in Game 3 of the 2001 ALDS. Man, I wish someone would make a video about that play and whether Jeter needed to actually make that throw. When they finally did get over the hump and make the ALCS in 2006, they were promptly swept by the Detroit Tigers. Toronto Maple Leafs vibes. Ultimately, the A's have made the postseason 12 times since Billy Bean took over as general General manager. They've won just two series in total and have never so much as sniffed the World Series. It's not just the playoff losses that spell heartbreak for A's fans. It's also the loss of beloved players. Sound familiar? For most of the 21st century, Oakland's roster has been less a collection of talent and more a revolving door of assets. Excellent prospects drafted and developed by the A's that they're simply unable to retain when it's time to hit the open market. Players like Jason Giambi, Barry Zito, Johnny Damon, Sonny Gray, Josh Donaldson, Sean Manaya. The list could go on forever and they were all either priced out of Oakland or traded before they could walk in free agency. It was pretty much a repeat of the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Even when they did swing for the fences on the trade block, they struck out. In 2008, the A's traded for Colorado slugger Matt Holliday, handing over a young prospect by the name of Carlos Gonzalez. Holliday went on to hit 11 home runs in 93 games as an athletic before signing with the Cardinals prior to the next season. Gonzalez spent a full decade as a Rocky, earning three trips to the All-Star Game, two Silver Slugger awards, and three gold gloves in the outfield. For A's fans, 
fans, there's no feeling of security. There's no player whose jersey can be purchased safely. The A's have developed a lot of talent, but they've also developed abandonment and trust issues. And unfortunately, that stretches beyond the players and onto the team itself. Look at almost every good team in the league right now. There's a good chance they have a former player from the Oakland A's, the Coliseum. Once a beautiful cathedral of blue collar baseball, the Oakland Coliseum has deteriorated and crumbled further with every passing season. Some call it baseball's last dive bar, but right now it looks like it's 2 a.m. and the pickings are slim. And trust me, they aren't that slim. Possums have invaded the broadcast booth. I am not making that up. In the last half decade, the Oakland Raiders, who shared the Coliseum with the A's and built a monstrosity known as Mount Davis in center field, packed their bags and moved to a new state-of-the-art stadium in Las Vegas. The Golden State Warriors didn't specifically acknowledge Oakland in their name, but they played across the parking lot in Oracle Arena, winning three titles in that building from 2015 to 2018 before moving across the bay to San Francisco. All that remains in the East Bay are the Oakland A's, and according to recent reports from the Nevada Independent, they're also leaving and joining the Raiders in the desert. For over 20 years, the A's have been attempting in vain to build a new home and remain in Oakland or the surrounding area. An uptown site was proposed and subsequently shot down by California Governor Jerry Brown. A 66th Avenue site was considered, a Fremont Stadium thought over, even a San Jose project was started only to be abandoned when the Giants evoked territorial rights. Perhaps the most promising endeavor was a waterfront stadium in beautiful Jack London Square, where the synonymous author wrote novels less heartbreaking than what's currently taking place in the Coliseum. In 2018, the team released renderings of the stadium that painted a ballpark that could have rivaled the beauty of PNC or Oracle just across the bridge. The project was picking up steam too, and then the world stopped. COVID not only halted the baseball season, it ground the A's progress to a halt. And in 2021, Major League Baseball allowed the A's to begin seeking options outside of the Bay altogether. Though bureaucracy and ambivalence played a huge part as well. The final nail in the coffin in the spring of 2023, the A's acquired a parcel of land in Las Vegas from Red Rock Casino near the Strip with plans to build a new $1.5 billion, 35,000 seat ballpark with a retractable roof. Just after, Oakland Mayor Shang Tao announced that the city was ceasing negotiations on the waterfront ballpark. While the A's were initially seeking a third of the Las Vegas stadium's cost from public funding, they recently made a deal that would cost the taxpayers just $395 million, more than six times their active payroll in 2022. It's all but done. Wiped clean. Their fans in Oakland are some of the most passionate in sports, and they've found a way to alienate them all in the last couple of years. It's important to keep in mind the A's aren't moving next season, or actually, anytime soon. The earliest timetable for their departure is 2027, meaning the A's still have to play at least 243 extremely awkward games in front of a home crowd that, despite all of its failures, still wants the team to stick around hoping daddy comes back from that cigarette run. While it makes plenty of sense to lose interest, a contingency of A's fans have urged Oakland to stage a reverse boycott to show the team and the league how much the Bay cares about the athletics and convince them not to move, but to sell the team. Sounds like a child waiting for their dad to come back from that cigarette run. Listen, stranger things have happened. The Kings played in a dilapidated mess of a stadium for years with one foot out of the door before a timely sale stopped them from leaving Sacramento. Though the greener pastures of Las Vegas has proved fruitful for the Las Vegas Raiders, at least for now. The story of the Oakland Athletics is one of high highs and low lows. And if it ends here, the MLB is saying goodbye to an iconic team. Who knows whether their cloud of pain will be lifted, but if the past is any indicator of the future, there may still be tough times ahead. He has struck out four times. Oh, deep to right. This may do it. It is gone. Bottom of the 19th inning, and we are finally going home. Thank you very much. Thank Brandon you very Ross. much. White Gallego gets to send him. What a night.